Hi, my name is Hannah. I'm a second year historian at Jesus College Oxford and this is the last video in my series about applying to Oxford. Um, this video specifically is just going to give you a bit of information about some of the strange quirks and terms that we have at Oxford um, that can sometimes seem a bit strange to outsiders. So the first thing I want to talk about is matriculation. You'll hear a lot about this in your first couple of weeks of Oxford and it's basically a short ceremony where you get welcomed as a member of the university. Um, it's usually about half an hour um, it takes place with um, everyone from your year in your college at the Sheldonian which is a small building in the centre of Oxford that takes about a thousand students at once um, and after the thing's finished you are officially a member of the university um, you wear subfusk, um, which is something that I'll talk about in a minute, and you basically have a good time, that's the point. Um, so once you've been accepted, a lot of people go out in Oxford and they spend time with their friends and they just celebrate the fact that Freshers' Week is over, their first week of work is over and they're now officially part of the university. So it's definitely something to look forward to, um, and it's not too much to worry about when you hear about it, it sounds a bit daunting, but in reality it's just a short little ceremony that uh, means that you are officially part of the university. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, subfusk and this is the outfit or the uniform that students at Oxford are expected to wear on special occasions, so basically matriculation and your exams. Um, there might be other occasions that you're expected to wear it depending on which college you go to and which activities you choose to do but for the majority of students they'll only have to wear it a few times. Um, so subfusk there is a lot of information online about it um, but basically it involves your mortarboard, um, a gown, um, a white shirt and black trousers or a skirt um, and you also have a tie or a bow tie or a ribbon around your neck. Um, I will insert a picture of me looking awkward in my subfusk on matriculation for you to look at to give you an example. Um, and it's basically just something that you wear to look smart. Um, in terms of purchasing like of the subfusk, um, the gown and the mortarboard and generally a ribbon um, can be bought from Oxford itself and a lot of people's college parents take them to go and get their subfusk when they first arrive in Oxford um, and I'll talk a bit more about college parents later but in terms of um, getting hold of your shirt and your trousers or your skirt and possibly your shoes as well um, think about getting those before you arrive in Oxford just because it's easier to track them down from wherever you are instead of having to stress about it in the first couple of weeks. Um, they're just kind of basically a smart outfit, it feels quite fun to wear it um, and you won't have to wear it too often so it doesn't become too stressful either. Another thing that I've mentioned a couple of times in this series but I've never really qualified is hall and hall is basically a massive room, um, a bit like the Great Hall in Harry Potter where you go to eat your meals um, and so they have ordinary meals and they also have formals and ordinary meals, the structure of them varies vastly depending on the college that you attend. Um, so some of them, um, it's a serve yourself meal where you just turn up, select what you like, pay a specific amount for what you've chosen and then you go eat. Others have prepaid meals, um, they have sit down meals, some have a mixture of the two. Um, so do look into that when you're applying to colleges to see what the specifics of the hall that you are applying for is. Um, generally they have good food, um, they usually provide uh, vegetarian options but sometimes if you want more specific options, so like halal options for example, you will need to look that up to make sure that the college you're applying to does provide that specific type of food to make sure that you're comfortable. Um, some colleges it's compulsory to eat in hall the whole time, other colleges it's not. Um, and so at Jesus College it's not compulsory to be in hall at all and that's partly because the second and third year accommodation has their own kitchens so it's expected that you would cook instead so that's something else that you would need to look into uh, when you're picking a college um, I would say. On top of um, general hall you have formals which are posher, usually they're um, a three course meal or even a four course meal sometimes, um, they're usually served to you um, a lot of the time they have a dress code, um, some colleges don't but some do, if there's an opportunity where you would be wearing a gown it's most likely going to be at a formal and they're a really great way to just get involved with Oxford, you'd invite uh, your friends or your family to a hall 
um, you can go to the halls of other colleges sometimes depending on special events or with your friends and so it's a really great time to just kind of spend time in the specific buildings have a look at all the portraits and um, have some really nice food Something that you'll hear very regularly when you're applying for Oxford is tutorials and these are basically small group teaching of maybe you and a couple of other students and a tutor which happens regularly um, in the university to give you the best quality education that's possible and so in these sessions they're usually about an hour um, and you go through whatever topic or subject you've been doing that week so for me I go through essays um, and I talk about the essay, the topic around what I've been reading that week um, and we go through any of the kind of problems and questions that might have arisen um, during my studies um, for that specific question. Um, if you do a STEM subject it's more likely to be going through a problem sheet where you would uh, complete the questions beforehand and then go through the solutions and any issues that you've had in that tutorial and it's basically an opportunity to, for you to spend some time just you and a couple of other students and your tutor to get a really good one-on-one -on -one teaching. Um, and it's something that's um, characteristic of Oxford, it's not provided in many places um, and it really does mean that you get to engage with your subject a lot more and talk about the things that you're most interested in. Um, it's quite like the interview process, so in the interview process where you have your half an hour to talk to your tutor, that's basically attempting to simulate what a tutorial will be like um, and so it's a really great opportunity for a lot of people to just have a good time. It's one of my favourite parts of university is going to my tutorials and talking to my tutors. So it's really something to look forward to and not something to dread. Um, but yeah, it's something that you will come across a lot in the application process and it basically just means those short one-on-one um, -on -one lessons with your tutor. The last thing I want to talk about is college parents. And this is basically a buddy system where as a new student you get paired up with um, some people from the year above you um, and you form a college family. So generally you would have two or maybe three college parents and a college sibling as well. And it basically is a way for you to get information that you need and ask questions to a specific person um, instead of feeling like you have no one to talk to in your first few weeks at Oxford and they do continue to be your parents right up until they leave so it means that even if you have any issues halfway through your first year you can speak to them and get the best advice possible. Um, a lot of people choose when they're in first year to uh, find a college spouse um, or maybe two who knows um, and then you can then have college children yourself in your second year um, and it's just a great way to pass on information to um, people in the year below you, get to know some people and often people have family dinners and um, they go out for a drink every term or whatever um, and it's just a great opportunity to spend some time with people from your college who aren't necessarily in your year. Um, so when you have applied to Oxford and if you get a place you'll usually get information about your college parents before you arrive. I would highly advise just um, reaching out to them uh, sending them a text or an email just to let them know a bit about you, to say hi, because as a college parent it's really great when your college children want to spend time with you and learn a bit about Oxford. Um, and it is a really great experience, I would highly recommend getting yourself a college spouse and getting some children when you are in second year because it means that you can have two college families instead of one. So those are the things that I think is really important to know about Oxford before you arrive. If you're applying I hope that this has helped you to feel a bit less stressed about the whole situation and if you have already been given a place um, hopefully this will mean that you're much more prepared going into your first couple of weeks at Oxford. If you have any other terms that you've come across that you're wondering what they mean um, or are a bit unsure about feel free to comment them down below and we'll try our best to let you know exactly what it is. Um, I hope that this series has been useful for you um, and best of luck with your journeys applying to Oxford, going to Oxford and hopefully for the rest of your degrees.